Uh, welcome to the next lecture. Uh, in the previous lectures, we have uh, looked at the notion of uh, concepts of limit and continuity and their applications. Uh, in this, uh, we begin uh, with uh, looking at uh, how the functions change uh, uh, as the independent variable changes, how the values of the function y uh, for a function y equal to f of x change. So, we want to analyze this and then um, we will see its applications in different fields in our field. So, this rate of change uh, is applicable in many different fields. I will just give you an illustration uh, before we actually look at this, how do we analyze this. So, for example, in uh, uh, mechanics, the rate of change of distance with respect to time of a moving body gives a notion of velocity. Uh, this you must have uh, uh, all many of you must have uh, driven a car or you must be sitting next to uh, somebody driving a car and you ask what is the speed and immediately the person looks at a meter and says our speed is 61 kilometers per hour. That means at that moment the vehicle is traveling at a speed of 61 kilometer per hour. How does uh, uh, the meter know that this is uh, the speed of the vehicle is so much. Uh, uh, we can only find out the average uh, of uh, a speed. For example, if at time vis a vis distance, so if a vehicle travels say at 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, if we observe that 10 o'clock to say 10 15, in 15 minutes it has traveled 2 kilometers then we can say the average speed is 2 kilometer divided by the 15 minutes that is average right how does that give us the instant speed at a point so that is the kind of analysis we want to do so in mechanics the rate of change uh, gives rise of distance gives rise to velocity the rate of change of velocity itself of a body gives rise to the notion of what is called acceleration Right? You might have also seen that very often that way oh, hey, you are accelerating your uh, uh, bike too fast or slow down and such kind of thing. Right? So, mathematically that is the rate of change of velocity that gives acceleration. The rate of change of momentum of a body, we will not define what is momentum, gives rise to what is called the force acting on that body or, or on that object. We will civil engineering, suppose um, uh, there is the road which is uh, uphill kind of thing going upwards or sloping downwards and then you, you are moving on that or you are moving towards a mountain, the rate of change of elevation gives rise to notion of the gradient in civil engineering or in topography. Another uh, um, uh, notion is population or decay of uh, uh, population growth or decay of uh, population. The rate of change of population, it could be population of humans, it could be population of animals, cells, right, and many other things. Uh, the price of uh, a stock, right, uh, the interest uh, earning of, of a fixed deposit, and so on, they are all come under what is called the growth and decay. And the rate of change of uh, the, that population with respect to time gives the growth and decay. And these are important things in demography, in uh, ecology and biology and so on and in our field also. In macroeconomics, the rate of change of gross domestic product, GDP what we popularly known as, uh, depends on uh, is, a, uh, is a function of time and the rate of change of GDP. Uh, is a very important concept uh, in economics and uh, uh, it is heatly, it is hotly debated by the political parties whether the GTB is going up or down, why, uh, why it is doing that and so on. So, that is uh, economic growth rate uh, or GDP, the rate of change of GDP is called the economic growth rate. How the prices of price affects production or how the change of supply of a commodity affects its price, change in price affects the revenue and so on. All these are important questions in commerce which one would like to analyze, understand and come to a, a kind of um, a theory 
uh, which will help or tools which will help one to decide about giving answers to these kind of questions. In mathematics itself, given a curve in a plane, it is important to know how to draw a tangent at a point. So, we will look at uh, some of these things uh, to become um, uh, to come to a mathematical tool which will help us to do these kind of things. So, let us uh, look at what uh, uh, we are looking at. We are going to look at functions y equal to f of x, where y could be price depending upon the demand, price depending upon the supply, GTP which is a function of time, cost right of the number of units produced, revenue units sold. So, all these are some functions uh, y function of x where x could be any one of this and y could be any one of this and more also. Right. So, we are heading towards the mathematics. So, let us take a function f of uh, f defined in an interval a b to r and let us say that the we are looking at very simple examples f is a constant function that means what f of x is equal to alpha for every alpha belonging to a b. So, it is a constant function at every point it gives the same value. What do you think should be the what is the change in the function? Well, there is no change because at every point the value is alpha right. So, at any point x naught if I look at x naught minus h the interval x naught minus h to x naught plus h inside a b then what is the proportionate change? Change in f of x naught plus h that is the value at a point x naught plus h this is the value at, a, at the point x naught divided by the change in x right. So, x naught plus h the value at x naught that is the change in the value of the function and how much is the change in uh, x coordinate that is x naught plus h minus x naught that is h. For this constant function that is 0 for every h that means the rate of change of the constant function is 0 at every point. So, we can safely say for a constant function the rate of change of the values of the constant function is 0. Well, let us look at uh, another uh, simple example uh, the linear function. So, let us look at a linear function uh, given by y equal to m x plus c, where m and c are fixed constants right. In a linear function m if you recall what was m, m was the slope of the line and c is the y intercept. So, y equal to m x plus c that is a linear function given to us. So, let us try to find out what is the proportionate change. So, for a point x naught in a b let us say that we look at a interval x naught plus h and x naught plus h inside a b. So, look at uh, values right. So, let us say h is say, okay. uh, and let us look at the value f of x naught plus h and uh, f of x naught minus divided by h. So, this is the increment in the values of the function and this is the increment in the independent variable x right at the point x naught. So, this is the ratio of the change right this is a change in y divided by the change in x right. So, that f of x naught plus h is m of x naught plus h from this minus f of x naught okay, um, and divided by h. Um, Right. So, uh, what is the rate of what is the change that is equal to m f of x naught plus h is m of x naught uh, plus c. Okay. Um, let us uh, look at this slightly more uh, clearly. So, our function is f of so we are looking at the linear function f of x is equal to so, that is y equal to m of uh, x plus c. So, at x naught what is f of x naught plus h? So, that is equal to m of x naught plus h plus c. What is f at x naught that is equal to m of x naught plus c. So, what is the difference m of x naught plus h minus f of x naught 
divided by h that is equal to m of x naught plus h plus c divided uh, uh, minus so let us calculate so that is equal to m of x naught plus h plus c minus m of x naught plus c divided by h. So, what is that equal to? So, m of x naught and m of x naught that will cancel out right and c will cancel out. So, what is left is m of h divided by h that is equal to h right. So, uh, for a, a linear function the rate of change is same. Uh, uh, so, this is equal to h cancels out and that is equal to m. So, rate of change is equal to m uh, for every uh, value of h. So, uh, again the rate of change is a constant function. So, the rate of change at every point x is equal to x naught is the same constant m uh, the slope of the linear equation. Right. So, uh, this, these are simple examples which illustrate um, the use of uh, the calculation of rate of change of a function uh, at a point. What happens if we have a general function? So, for a general function to find the rate of change at a point, let us look at uh, uh, a point x naught uh, and let us look at a value h. So, that x naught plus uh, x naught minus h and x naught uh, plus h both are inside uh, the interval i and then look at uh, the change that occurs when you move from the point x naught to x naught plus h. So, in that case this proportionate change is represented by f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught divided by x naught plus h minus x naught. So, x naught cancels. So, this is what is left out x naught is fixed. So, this is a function of h and we want to know what is. So, this is a proportionate change for h. So, we want to know what happens uh, to this proportionate change at the point x naught. So, that means what we should make this h smaller and smaller. So, let us try to calculate one will try to calculate uh, when um, uh, this quantity this is now a function of h x naught is fixed right. So, this whole thing this ratio is a function of h and one can try to look at what happens to this as h goes to 0. So, this says uh, we should be looking at uh, the quantity namely limit of this quantity right f of uh, x naught plus h minus f x naught this should be h here this should be h and limit x going to um, x uh, h going to 0. So, this whole expression uh, needs to be re rewritten. So, this uh, essentially says we should be looking at uh, we should be looking at uh, the limit of this proportion. So, we should be looking at limit h going to 0 of f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught divided by h. So, so this is the proportionate change for h and limit of this, this is what is important to be looked at. So, this we can think of uh, re representing this quantity if it exists uh, to be representing the rate of change of the function at the point x naught. So, to make it more precise, let us uh, make the definition. So, let f of uh, f be a function from a b to r uh, such that and c is a point inside a b. We have purposefully taken a open interval and a point c uh, inside this inside the open interval because once uh, um, this is a property of open interval if you take uh, c plus h right whether h is positive or negative that will also belong to a, a b. So, we will look at the change f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h. So, that is a change when you go from the point c plus h to c. Uh, c plus h could be on the positive side or it could be on the negative side depending on h is positive or negative. So, this is a change for a change h units in x. So, one would like to know the limit of this as h goes to 0. So, if this quantity exists in that case we say uh, 
that uh, the function uh, has a derivative at the point x is equal to c and it is denoted by f dash of c or uh, it is also it is a d f c by uh, d of x. Let us try to see um, how does uh, this help in uh, uh, giving us the various concepts that we have been thinking about. Geometrically uh, saying that a function is differentiable at a point c that limit exists is essentially saying that f dash of c gives the slope of the tangent to the graph of f of c. So, to illustrate this idea a bit more let me draw a picture and uh, uh, see uh, how does this uh, help. So, let us uh, look at uh, this is uh, some axis okay? and we have got uh, a function uh, which is say like this okay? that is my f of x. And let us take uh, a point say let us take a point C here and that is my A and that is my B. Okay? So, at this point I want to know what is I want to draw a tangent to f of x this is a geometric problem at x is equal to 2 f of x at the point x that means what this is the point c comma f of c right that is on the graph of the function. So, this is f of c and that is c. So, here I want to draw a tangent. So, what is the tangent? Tangent is a line. So, normally we take tangent what is the definition of a tangent is a, is a line that touches f of x or the graph of f of x at only one point. Graph of uh, tangent let us say at x is equal to c it touches at the point c comma f of c. Now, in this if you uh, look at it is, is a line. So, we know what is the equation of a line and what is the meaning of this word touches. Right. So, we know that this line has to pass through this point c comma f of c and it is a straight line. So, what is the that qualifies which line qualifies to be the tangent at this point. So, can we say that can we say that uh, this is the tangent line or this is the tangent line or this is the tangent line. So, which line is the uh, tangent line to the graph of the function. To understand that what we do is the following. So, let me draw the graph once again and see what we are trying to do. So, this is so let me uh, draw a slightly more uh, involved graph. So, let us say this is my graph. So, this is my graph of f of x and we are trying to look at this is the point c and there is a point where I am trying to look for a tangent. So, which line I should take like a tangent and that line should have the property that uh, it touches the graph only at one point. So, what we do is we uh, try to approximate this. How do I approximate this? We take a point nearby. So, let us take a point c plus h here say for example. So, that gives me a point here right. So, this point is c plus h comma f of c plus h and this is the point which is c comma f of c. So, given this let us look at the line joining these two. So, let us look at this line which passes through these two points right. Now, um, what is happening is this line is cutting the graph at many points right. So, obviously, this is not qualified to be a tangent. But what we do what we observe is if I take this point closer if I take c plus h here then what is the value. So, then this is the point that I get and what will be my line now. So, then the line has become like this right. So, it has avoided many other points in between. So, and to draw a line we know want to what is the information that is required to draw a line? We have should have a point and its slope. So, what is the slope of this line which passes through c and c plus h? 
that is if you recall the equation of straight line y2 minus y1 so that is c plus h minus f of c divided by c plus h minus c right so that is equal to f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h so that is the slope of this line and as this point comes closer and closer to c this line will merge all the points to one point so that will become a tangent to the uh, uh, tangent to the uh, function f of f of x at the point c so what we are saying is limit of this h going to 0 of f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h gives the slope of tangent at x is equal to c. So, geometrically this gives the slope of the tangent at that point. Since so we are looking at these things, uh, um, let us uh, one can also look at it a bit geometrically uh, in a dynamic geometry setup. So, let me show you what I am trying to do in a more uh, sophisticated way. So, I am opening uh, this picture in GeoGebra, uh, which I mentioned earlier, you can try to use that. So, yes, so it has loaded. So, this is uh, uh, the picture of um, this function. So, let me just make the window a bit larger so that you are able to see. So, we are saying that this is the tangent, right. So, this is the curve, this green uh, is the curve y equal to f of x. At this point, okay, I am trying to draw a tangent and we are claiming that this red line is a tangent. So, um, I said that to ensure that this is a tangent, let us take a point nearby, join that, right. So, that line at a nearby point is called a secant. So, this point could be on the left side of C or it could be on the right side of C, right. So, I take a point here. So, this is the secant line, okay. That is the point, this is, this is the point on the left side I have taken and taken the line joining it. So, this is normally called a secant line. So, the point is as I come closer and closer to this point C, this line should become the tangent. So, let us move this. So, I am moving this point closer and closer closer and closer and you see that when I approach that point that becomes the red line becomes the blue line. So, secant becomes a tangent as I approach uh, from the this is I have approaching the point C from the left. I can go on the right side. So, it is this point. So, this is the point this is the point nearby this is a line joining. So, such a line is called the secant line. So, the slope of the secant line becomes the slope of the tangent line as this approaches this. Uh, so, the point on the left or on the right this approaches right. So, that is. So, that is what uh, dynamic geometry can show you that means right. So, uh, geometrically uh, if f is differentiable at a point then f dash of c gives the slope of the tangent to the line uh, at the to the graph of the function at this point c. Okay. We already know that the point is here to draw the line we have to only know the slope. So, slope is given by the derivative of that function at that point if it exists. So, let us look at uh, as uh, we observed earlier for a, a constant function derivative at every point is equal to 0 we have seen that. Let us look at uh, the linear function f of x is equal to m x plus c and uh, we saw that the derivative of this is equal to m which is uh, the slope of the line. So, derivative of a linear function is nothing but the slope of the line at that point right and the slope is same everywhere. So, that means derivative of a linear function is a constant function f dash of x is equal to m for every x. Um, let us look at uh, f of x is equal to x square when x is a real number. So, to find uh, its derivative at a point what we have to do we have to look at the um, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. 
So, what is f of x plus h? That is x plus h whole square minus f of x that is x square divided by x plus h minus uh, x. So, that is equal to h. So, we have to find limit of this quantity as h goes to 0. So, let us simplify this a bit. So, this gives us open the algebra uh, square. So, this gives you x square plus 2 h x plus x square h square. So, that is algebra identity a plus b whole square equal to x square plus 2 h x plus h square minus x square. So, x square cancels out and what you are left with is um, 2 h x plus h square divided by h. h cancels out. So, it is 2 x plus h limit h going to 0. Now, this uh, all the theorems that we had proved uh, for the limits of a function of one variable limit of this is nothing but equal to um, h going to 0 is 2 x. So, for the function f x is equal to x square its derivative is equal to 2 x. So, this function is f of x is equal to x square is differentiable everywhere with the derivative equal to 2 x. So, this power essentially is coming down as 2 and this power becomes less 1. So, that becomes x to the power 1. So, that becomes equal to 2. So, d of one writes d by d x of x square is equal to 2 x. So, uh, uh, in the next lecture we will describe uh, what are the rules of differentiation. These, these are basically a theorems that help us to find derivatives of uh, some complicated functions. So, we will do it in the next lecture. Thank you.